So again, I'm still working on it, but what do you say? You want me to be honest? Totally, of course. I mean, it's just the two of us. That song is shit in a can. What? I thought it was just awful. I disagree. This song is a huge hit. A hit? No way, Ruff. Trust me. I know this business. That song sucks. Not even a tampon ad would want to use that song. You have ads for tampons that are very good. Hello. Welcome to the Quarter to Three live stream for Friday. Um, Happy Friday, TGIF. We made it through another week. Before we have a weekend, let's play some Lovecraft's Untold Stories. Uh, first of all, hello to everyone. Uh, I was glad to have Wednesday off. I was afraid I wasn't here. I had someone cover for me. I hope you guys enjoyed him. Uh, so this is a roguelike. It's, uh, should, I, should I mention the three things that go into a modern roguelike? The three hallmarks of the modern roguelike? Don't get me started. Let's just play a game. Uh, these, something's weird in my headphones. I can't mute myself, so I'm gonna have to cough. You guys are gonna hear a little bit of it, like now. <coughs> Sorry about that. Very rude. Let's see, Christy Gaines, Lord Cost, Chris Markinson, uh, we had JFLS. Did I get the letters right? The guy with the Barry Lyndon icon. That's how I think of you, Mr. JFLS. Mona Fioroso and Do Donald Tuckle on Twitch. So, uh, I'm already having an issue. So, it's a twin-stick shooter. Look, here I am. Oh, oops. I got a shotgun. I don't know if you can tell. And it's doing a weird thing where sometimes... Oh, oh this is going to drive me crazy. Yeah, it's not reading my game controller now. If I let it go back to neutral... It, oh, there's some issue. This is going to get me killed. This is totally going to get me killed. All right, well, I'll rage against the controller support in this game in a little bit. Uh, so you, the first level, you... Uh, hmm. Am I in the hospital? The first level, I think you're, like, in a mansion. The second one, you go to a hospital. I, I think I'm back in the dang mansion. Yeah, it's, it periodically decides, no, we're going to ignore your game controller. So here we go, combat. I just blew that guy up. Look, you can interact with... Uh, how do you interact with stuff? Uh, that? No, that, that, that. Oh, there you go. Look. Loot. Uh, why can't I not pick the loot up? Oh, A? Yeah, okay, there you go. Right. This game wants you to hit buttons. I'm okay with that. Uh, so, <clears throat> what makes this game... I don't know about special, but, but the, one of its selling points is that you play different characters at different points, and they, of course, have different powers and abilities. This is the detective. Uh, he's got a shotgun and he can wield uh, dynamite. Hi, Vinwraith. Vinwraith typed something and then apparently deleted it because it says, Vinwraith, message retracted. He probably said something terribly naughty. Yeah, this, this has got to be a hospital. Okay, so I am in the hospital, just a second level. Okay, look! How many roguelikes give you events like this? Eric Geithner. Hello, Mr. Geithner. Dead body. Or, examine it or ignore it. We're not going to ignore it. Actually, maybe we should. No, you know, let's examine it. This cadaver is crisscrossed with sutures scars. Bits of skin seem to have been transplanted from other bodies. Limbs transplanted. Even the eyes are mismatched. What's most disturbing is that the scars from the stitches are fully healed, and some appear fresher than others as if this person underwent many, many unnecessary transplants. I wouldn't have expected someone to be able to live through that many drastic procedures, let alone retain the function of the limbs. Uh, is it, I'm pressing button. Oh, you game, you're going to drive me crazy. Lost some sanity. I don't know what it means when you lose sanity, because I don't see anything that's a sanity meter. Obviously on the left... Oh, okay, here's what I'm guessing. On the right, this is my... Uh, oops, no. Where's my... Oh, shoot a monkey! I just wasted a piece of dynamite. Dead nabbit. There. Uh, there's my stamina, because there's my, my punch power. I don't really feel stamina. Uh, on the left, of course, are my hit points, and I'm guessing that the purple tendrils that are crawling over the postage stamp portrait of me, those are, represent insanity, I'm guessing. 
What is crying sons? <clears throat> okay, Eric Geithner. We're not going to put up with your sass. Eric Geithner says, Awesome, a Lovecraft game. I haven't seen one of these before. <laughs> Markinson making special requests for special privileges on the forum. Which, yeah, Markinson was not aware that was a limitation. Oh, jeez. Now it's not reading my... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm about to get killed because... Well, I'm done playing this. It's going to kill me because it's not reading my stupid... Although I am now just walking around getting hit by balls of goo. All right, let's find out what happens when you die in this roguelike. John Murphy killed by electricity in a place known as hospital. Uh, and now my controller, I'm going to set it on the table so you guys can get a sense for this. I want you to listen. What you're about to hear is, is what my controller is doing. You ready? Apparently, being dead is being in a state of constant vibration. What are those things? Are those Miko? I bet they're supposed to be Mikos. Markinson, that's pretty shabby if the game's doing that to you. Oh, it's purring. <laughs> JFLS says it's purring. Very nice. <clears throat> there was a cat here. Let me see if I can... He snores sometimes, which is just a, a really endearing little wheezing sound. Oh, Made of Meat says it's probably doing the perpetual vibration because I was killed by electricity. Made of Meat, I like that. So apparently being dead, there are no repercussions. Okay, I'm going to try to... <clears throat> okay, this is a little drastic. Bear with me. I'm going to try to fix the game controller issue by unplugging it and then plugging it back in. Alright, that should take care of it. Up there, see? It just did it. Alright, let me see. Are you supposed to play WASD? What determines which way I'm facing? Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to use the arrow key? Yeah, no, this is clearly a, a game built for a game controller. I am gonna rage quit if I if it does the, if it does this one more time. Because there's other things I could live stream. I'll have you know. Okay, so it's a roguelike. <clears throat> Doesn't seem to have permadeath. Most roguelikes have three things: permadeath, procedural generation, and uh, progression. Uh, so I don't know if there's permadeath because I seem to have bounced back just fine. Uh, I don't know what sort of meta progression is in the game. Uh, you do go look what I can do. I can return to the strange place that's a hub. And as far as I can tell, all is, the only thing there is a uh, an inventory chest where you can store stuff. Uh, but what I do know that it has, that's like a... There, it wasn't even reading the D-pad. Oh, game, you're about to get on my bad side. What I do know that it has is procedural generation. It's this... Yeah, it's, oh, it's not reading the joystick. Oh, oh I'm, I, I'm about to pen an angry missive to the developers. So it's a Binding of Isaac kind of random, randomly generated dungeon, which is just like one different rooms are basically tiles, and they get shuffled around and stuck together. I don't know what to do about this issue. You know what? Let's go. Okay, hold on. Bear with me. Uh, I'm going to go to Steam, and I'm going to go to the stupid games discussion page, and I'm going to see, is there anyone saying... Game controller support not working. Nope. Yeah, problem with controller. 17 posts. Oh, you stupid game. So I don't know if anyone else is having this problem. I've been playing this on the Xbox controller, and when I try to navigate the inventory, either it doesn't work, or instead of going to... Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, you... Ch Wait a minute. This was August 13th. All right, let's go to the end. Try to say, oh, so apparently this has been a persistent issue. All right. Full game is out. Still can't play with controller. Developer. Hello. Our logs showed that everything is in order. What are we missing? We need more information. These are separated by commas, so I'm guessing this. <laughs> I don't know where the developers are, but I'm guessing there's there do some there's some Cyrillic le lettering on some of the 
posts, so maybe they're Russian. But anyway, they're using commas instead of periods. So, hello, our logs show that everything is in order. What are we missing? We need more information. What other input devices are connected to the computer? What is your keyboard mouse model? Yeah, I'm about to rage on install. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, what's a runner? Yeah, I'll get killed one more time. And then we'll, we'll go to a, uh, something else. Why are you guys talking about Bioshock Infinite? Uh, Rocket Monkey, Bioshock Infinite is the only Bioshock where I completely stopped caring about the characters in Game World by the end. So when the twist ending came, it got no reaction. Dragon Bros. Eh, Infinite was the least of the three. Christy Gaines, both of you forget that up until the first half, I think she means through the first half, it was fantastic. Greg Ambrose, I don't regret playing it. I just didn't like it as much as the first two. I think the, I think the writing, it's, it's some of Ken Levine's best work in Bioshock Infinite. I just don't think uh, the gameplay supports it. And as I, have I told you guys this before? If I'm ever like in a job interview, because I've decided, I, I don't know when I'd ever get a job, but I figured if I'm ever like in a job interview, or, or say a beauty pageant, you know, I'm a beauty pageant, and during the interview portion of the, of the contest, the guy asks me, you know, Steve Harvey or whoever does it, does beauty pageants. He says, <clears throat> what would you say the best game of all time is? And I wouldn't want to just sit there and go, uh, well, lots of games are really good, and uh, depends on what you mean by best. Uh, and I guess I could talk about favorite or most influential or but really there's they're all good in different ways and so rather than just stammer and stay say that and basically blow the beauty contest and because you know people would then know this guy doesn't know what he's talking about i've decided okay i have to figure out what i would say and until grand theft auto 5 came out and now red dead redemption 2 i was pretty clear that it would be uh, bioshock 2 and i have like reasons i could give and whatnot why aren't i playing that an Army Enlistment Sensor Takers Journal. So, is that supposed to be census? <sighs> sensor Takers. Are they taking the things where you burn incense? Or are they taking government prescription on certain written materials? Oh, now, yeah, the... the it's mostly just a record of expenses and lists of the numbers of enlistable men in Arkham County. The censor taker. Wait, am I mistaken now? Because the fact that they do. All right, I probably should have Googled that before I went out on a limb. Uh, the censor taker made a note about a few locations. However, the village of Dunwich. Isn't that color out of space? Uh, no, that's the Watley Farm, isn't it? What happens in Dunwich? Which one of the stories is in Dunwich? The village of Dunwich is described as having young men who are nearly university unsuitable, apparently inbred, possibly affected by toxic substances in the ground or water supply. Um, okay. <laughs> Craig Ambrose says, a sensor taker once tried to test me. Or a sensor taker tried to test me once. Very good, Craig Ambrose. I got that. Christy Gaines. Wait, what came out of Early Access today? Oh, oh, Sunless Skies. Yeah, I haven't played that. Uh, Rocket Monkey, I haven't played Minerva's Den yet. I got stuck at the start. Too hard. Yeah, Minerva's Den is good, too. It's the um, <clears throat> the fellow who went and did uh, uh, Gone Home. Fulbright Studios, right? Why can't I think of his name? But Minerva's Den was really good. Why can't... Uh. All right, I... Yeah, it's not reading. Okay, the towns of Innsmouth has a high rate of alcoholism despite prohibition. Apparently, an inherited degenerative disease affects the vast majority of young men, although many unsuitable candidates express interest in the Navy. <laughs> See, that's cute. Steve Gaynor. Thank you, Nathan Schubert. The town of Kingsport, rings a bell, has had a, quote, recent influx of Italian, Sicilian, and Irish immigrants, many of whom would be suitable, end quote. And Arkham also has a note, high student population. See, this is kind of cute, but I lost part of my sanity. And I'm getting info points. I think I spin the... I think that's like... Exp it's not reading the game control... Oops. <laughs> when I disgustedly threw the game controller down... And actually, I set it down hard. I didn't throw it down. Uh, I, I fired a, a shotgun shell. Uh, Alright, what should I live stream instead of this thing that doesn't work? 
show you guys the strange place. Makes me think. Of, uh, makes me think of Stranger Things. Oh. I should go write a one-star review. <laughs> All right, here I am at the strange place. I'm gonna <clears throat> move around with WSD. Here's my library over here. If you guys want to check out, oh, what is this? I can interact with it. If you guys want to check out a book? Let me know. Oh, see, look, this looks cool. <laughs> Dag nabbit. I want to complete percentage. I want to to level up my percentages on each of these elder gods. Let's see, which one's my favorite? You know, Cthulhu's the easy one. Everybody's like, oh, Cthulhu, Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Frankly, I think he's a little, I think he's a little overrated. Azathoth, I can't help but think of Galactus, which is, isn't that a giant cloud in Fantastic Four that eats the universe? Azathoth is more like a cosmic phenomenon than an elder god. Dagon, eh, good, but kind of like a lesser Cthulhu. He's kind of like Cthulhu's sidekick. He is Robin to Cthulhu's Batman. Nyarlathotep is a good one. Um, but there's a little, something a little inscrutable about Nyar Nyarlathotep. I'm not quite sure what the deal is. Like You see him a lot of times as like an Egyptian kind of fella. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but... Immediately, I know that Shubna Giroth is my favorite. The Black Goat of a Thousand Young. How weird is that? So I need to level up my Shubna Giroth percentage. And I can't do it until this game gets working controller support. Oh, so much great. Now, well, how do I back up? Escape. Oh! All right, what else? I'm sure they'll fix it, right? The fact that someone was complaining about it in August... Oh, look, here's the machine that, uh, yeah, here's my storage. Look at all the stuff that I have. So I think this stuff was part of a press bill that they gave us. Because I did not, I got some of this stuff. Well, maybe, you know what, maybe I did get all this fair and square. A mine. Wait, what? Azathoth's eye? Sweet. What does it even do? What language is even that? <laughs> Eric Geithner, is this an early access game? Eric Geithner, it was until today. Golden bug teleports you to a safe... See, I want to... Ibn Ghazi's liquid. Mysterious liquid in an atomizer. Things become invisible. Lord Kosk, perhaps Tom doesn't know how to use a controller. Please, dude. Markinson definitely got the quote. What language is even that? I love that line reading. Gabriel Byrne in Hereditary. So, uh... Oh. See, only the detective can use... Anybody can use chocolate. Only the detective can use TNT. You know, he's kind of an Edward Carnby. So, okay, we're done with this. If it can't... Like, if it's going to just randomly stop reading my game controller... You know, should I try a different controller? Mm, that would mean I'd have to go out into the living room, and I just can't be arsed. Eric Geithner, maybe Tom's sanity is too low to use a controller. Isn't that, wouldn't that be, uh, I was going to say, wouldn't that be cool, but what was that Silicon Knights game, Eternal Darkness, right? Where, as you lost sanity, the game would do weird meta things. I could see that being something that it would do, like disable the controller briefly. Or, or maybe just disable one axis of the controller. Lord Koska, I approve of the pixels. I do too, and I want to see more, like, Migos and whatnot. Um in their little pixel presentation. And that's actually decent pixel animation. Look at that. Uh, that Tower 47 game that was kind of like a Bioshock that, that also had good pixel animation like this. Uh, Roth to Truculent, you're... A... Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, Roth to Truculent, you're... You're talking about this game? You have cases you have to... Okay, wait. Wait, what is he? Okay, I gotta back up and figure out what he's talking about because it sounds cool. Roth to Truculent... Uh... Where does he come in? He can't be talking about this. He better not. Uh, how is unavowed? Oh, I might have that installed. Hold on, let's go see if... Um, no, I don't. What is unavowed? That's an adventure game that's like better than most adventure games. You know, let's go over to that. Unavowed. All right. Okay, how long is the install? Ugh, two and a half gigs. It's probably take like four minutes or something. Oh, Wadjet 
get, uh, wait, do I know who they are? Techno Babylon is a game that they made that I've played. So it looks like they just either publish or make, I'm guessing they publish these, uh, adventure games. Ooh, un Unavowed looks cool. Oh, you know what? I want to stop looking at uh, screenshots of it because those are spoil. Oh, it's total spoiler! Don't look at that. Rot the Truculent, lol. I was recommending that you stream Unavowed. Well, Rot the Truculent, I have some bad news for you. We're only 80, 92% installed. So, oh, 99% installed. So there's a waiting period. Oh, nope, we're ready to go. All right, let me see if I can smoothly transition. I don't know that I've ever done this without prepping it beforehand. All right. Exit there. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's try to do this in an orderly fashion. Uh, there. No, no, that's not the one. There's like a, hold on. Be right back. There. Actually, I'll be here the whole time, but the visual component of the live stream will be back. Okay, let's exit out of this non-working game. And furthermore, let's go ahead and rage uninstall it. There you go. Right-click, uninstall, delete. You can't see this because it would be vulgar, and there's... I don't have a video camera, but I'm flipping at the bird as I uninstalled it. All right, unavowed. Uh, let me just launch the configuration tool so I can set maybe the size of the window. I better be able to play this in a window. Uh, mode, start in windowed mode. Good, so I've done the right thing. Oh, no, but wait, let me set the resolution. Uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, okay, here we go. This is called uh, Calling an Audible. No, don't do that mode. No, it's when I tell it to start. Okay, hold on. Let me just save and run. All right, we'll see what happens. All right, this window's too big. Ooh. Whoa. What? What's going on? What kind of game is this? What kind of game even is this? Uh, turn it down a little bit while I try to figure out how to resize the window so that it works. Okay, you know, hold on. <laughs> All right, let me quit out and go back to that configuration tool. Eric Geithner voting for Subnautica below zero when I haven't even finished Subnautica, Eric Geithner. What's the matter with you? Okay, hold on. We'll go back to the configuration tool. <laughs> Greg Ambrose. Let's play a hidden object game. So relaxing. Greg Ambrose, are you being facetious? Utsby, uh, going back to Lovecraft, untold Lovecraft stories, which will remain untold, when we were talking about the animation, says, exaggerating, bouncing, sprite, idle animation loops. He says that's one of his least favorite retro-style cliches. All right, launch configuration tool, and, uh, okay, start in windowed mode, but I want full screen, no, windowed scale, here we go. Um, uh, I, I've never been asked this question before. None, original game size? No, it's shrinking it, okay, hold on. Windowed scale times two, oh, there's 1280 by 720, that'll have to do. Oh, 1920 by... Oh, I fixed it. Okay, oh, I'm so good at troubleshooting. Watch this. All right. Let's see if I can get this to work. And... Boom! All right, I'm going to... I presume I don't need a controller for this, right? Fix the volume level real quick, because I... All right, uh, let's just do this. I know nothing about what's going on here. May you be snatched away from this place. You shall no more dare to deceive, persecute, and torment. Or use Oxford commas. As smoke is driven away, as wax melts before the fire. So shall you be driven away, unclean spirit! Silence! Now, answer true. Are you demon, man, or woman? So am I rolling up a character? 
Is this where I try to be like Sarah Palin? Why would I pick Demon? I ain't no all this dancer, honestly. Demon! Your power over no, his mind is waning. Release him now! Release him before I am forced to destroy you! Remember! You are human! Remember! Tell us, before the demon regains control, your name. Tell us your name! Yeah, I don't... Well, do I use... Uh, it's always embarrassing doing this. Did you hear that, evil spirit? He knows himself. He is yours no longer. Now your past. Tell me something about your past. Wait, go back. I want to change... profession! Quick! Uh... Actor, police officer, bartender. Yes! He's beginning to remember. Sworn to protect the innocent from those who would do them harm. I seem to have gotten it right. Inside you is a spirit who will destroy many unless you stop it. Do your duty one last time. Fight it! Remember who you are! Remember! One thing before we get going. I want you to take point. You think you're ready? Um her name is Vicky. I have deduced. Honestly, I'm not. I know this looks routine, just a bunch of goth kids getting high and causing trouble, but something doesn't smell right. And by that, I mean the uniform who called it in. According to dispatch, it was Franco Orino. At least, I don't think so. Just do your job. Get statements, talk to Marino about what happened. After that, we'll see if there's anything worth talking about. Well, after you, partner. So I'm a cop. Your partner and mentor, Vicky Santini. She seems on edge tonight. The bouncer holds the tide of goth kids at bay. She's at the front of the line. Probably good it does her. A line of fishnets, long coats, no Oxford commas in sight and white makeup extend around the block. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, you know, I'm going to talk to her. This new Ebbyfish track is tight. <laughs> Come on, let us in. Not for nothing, but this really sucks. Sorry, club's closed for now. You want in, you'll have to wait. Have you guys seen Destroyer? The Karen Kusama movie? Probably not, so I won't say what I was going to say. Uh, I... Oh yeah? You got any proof of something? Gonna need that before I let you in. <sighs> it's your show, partner. Do what you gotta do. Uh, looks legit. About time you guys showed up. The natives here are getting a bit restless. You wanna talk to Mrs. Loris? She's inside. I didn't really see anything. That cop did all the real work. Before Marino. I knew what was happening, it was over, and he saved the day. Yeah. As in, he saved lives and stopped the bad guys. It was like Bruce Lee or something. Anyway, you can go in. Bruce Lee, huh? Whatever. Just do what you gotta do so we can reopen. And give that cop in there a raise, will you? He was a damn hero. Are you two the police detectives? That's us. Good. I'm Alana Loris. I own this place. Officer Marino's in the back room, along with the three idiots who started this mess. Sure, I can tell you. It was something else. Anyway, here's what happened. These three kids pulled out knives. These long silver switchblade things. Mm. I swear to God, I thought it was going to be a bloodbath. But then, then that Officer Marino swung in. I swear, it was like something out of a Bruce Lee movie. Bruce Lee, huh? The guy outside said the same thing. Well, it's true. He fought them all. All three of them. Disarmed them and put them all in cups. Then he dragged them all to the back room. Two guys and a girl, but yeah, those kids, they're regulars here. 
They come here and get wild, but they're good kids. They always are. I can't imagine why they do something like this. Anyway, they're in the VIP room back there. I guess we need a statement from all of them. I'll be here if you need me. Uh, Rotter Truck Emma pointed out, yeah, this is a flashback. Uh, you're remembering what happened before your character was possessed. Do you guys know a movie called Eva's Possession, I think? Ava's Possession? With Louisa Krauss? Anyway, there's my obscure recommendation for you. Hey, you did the fly solo? I want to talk to the owner for a bit longer. Thanks. When this is done, first round's on me. Look, I know I'm being a bit unorthodox. But trust me, okay? You're doing great. Sir? <laughs> that guy was Bruce Lee. <laughs> I'm fine, detective. Never better. I guess you want to know what happened? I was doing my rounds. I was just passing by, and I heard screams from inside. I ran in. I found these three armed with knives and prepared to attack innocent civilians. So I disarmed them and cuffed them. Duck Helmet, hello. Voting for Call of Cthulhu. Can't be any worse than Lovecraft's untold stories. Actually, you know what? It can. It maybe is, considering what I saw of it. I got stuck, I think, trying to find a handle for a winch. And boy, if that doesn't scream Lovecraft, I don't know what does. <clears throat> um. Yeah, all by myself. Ask around. Get everyone's statements. They'll back me up. He looks pale, his eyes keep twitching. These kids sit uncomfortably with their hands cuffed behind them. They look confused and dazed. I don't know what came over me. Ava's I don't possession. do stuff Thank like you. this. But that cop stopped us. It was it was like a Bruce Lee movie. I just want to go home. Can I go home now? We couldn't fight him. He was like <laughs> Bruce Lee or something. It was like something out of a Bruce Lee movie. Wait, who's Bruce Lee? Hey, was I interrupting anything? Uh, and yeah, Christy Gaines says at least the, the voice acting isn't terrible. I agree. So far, very good. Um. Yeah, suspects. So, Marino, you got a pretty good caller here. Three of them, in fact. Thank you, ma'am. I'm just curious about one thing. These three are all restrained. Police issue cuffs, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, funny thing. The standard officer's kit only has two pairs of handcuffs. Mm -hmm. So, I just gotta know, where'd the third pair come from? See that, Franco? You got us both so puzzled. You got an answer for us? Yeah, I, uh, took an extra. That was lucky. You didn't need three cuffs when you took down that mugger yesterday. Just the one. Or what about those two deli robbers the day before that? You only needed two cuffs then. But today, you take down three bad guys, and you just happen to have three pairs of cuffs. She's sharp. Why can't I play as her? Nothing. I'm just doing my job. Your job? Right. All the suspects in all those crimes, they all had perfect records before you arrested them. And speaking of records, what about yours? You've had an unremarkable career up until this week. Care to explain this sudden shift in direction? I've... I've been reading. Reading? What, like, self-help or something? Or something. I did a great job here, Detective Santina. It was like something out of a Bruce <laughs> Lee movie. You should recommend me for a promotion. Yeah, yeah, good job, Marino. Never knew you were such a badass. I'll, I'll just go call this in. Um, Duck Helmet says, uh, those are some pretty nicely drawn heads. And the little, when somebody talks on the right side of the screen. And he should know, because I know he's an artist. Um. What does it look like? 
For ten years, I've been the bottom of the totem pole, the butt of everyone's jokes. I tried to get ahead, really, I tried, but nobody ever gave me a damn chance. She'll be fine. She'll think I'm a hero, just like you will. Fuck. Okay, okay. Look, I'll kick it over to you. Just put the gun down. Take it. Just take it. I don't even know what I'm doing with that thing. Look, I, I had no choice, you understand? I've been stuck in this uniform for ten years. Ten years! I can't take it anymore! Then I found that book. Well, what do you do? <laughs> oh, fuck! Dude, what the hell? Damn it, do something! She's totally dazed. She's not saying a word. What the hell is going on? What about the kids? Are the kids okay? Your chosen vessel remembers. You are no longer welcome, wicked spirit. The hands you control will no longer do your bidding. In the name of myself, my witness, and the soul whom you hold captive, I cast you out! Gotcha! Eli! Uh, let's see, uh, so Duck Helmet says, so, uh, what do you think of the writing? Uh, that's a nice twist. So Duck Helmet, so far, so good. You know, gotta see how things turn out in the longer term. Um, Roth the Chocolate says, Tom, you monster. I didn't, yeah, that's what I get for using my own name for the character, right? I guess I am accountable for that. She looks ordinary, but had a grip like a steel vice. She's hovering over the man like a mother hen. You can't see him from this angle, but his moaning tells you he's alive. Stand back! Jeez, Mandy, put that sword away. The spirit is gone. That guy's harmless. See? He doesn't even remember how he got here. It looks like his memory got scrambled during the exorcism. Scrambled? What? It happens. I apologize for the threat. It has been a long night. Please, come with us, and we will explain everything. I should tell you guys which one I'm saying. Uh, fine, right Thank behind you. you. Gratitude, at least. This way, please. Look, she's a... We've had a rough night. Go easy on us, okay? Just come on downstairs. When you're ready, we'll explain everything. We're the good guys. Honest. So I murdered five people. Am I gonna? Did I just get away with that? You don't know what building you're in, but this door leads into it. Do take your time. Soak it all in. <laughs> uh, this man is slashed in several places. You can only hope he went quickly. Pretty redhead impaled straight through the heart. This man's face has been beaten beyond recognition. An old woman lies crushed under the table. Uh, if she's affected by the carnage around her, she gives no sign. He looks slightly green. He's obviously uncomfortable being here. You can relate. At least the rain is keeping the crowds away. Uh, so she looks most together, so let's talk to her. So, Andy. how is that memory of yours? Anything spring to mind? What the hell happened here? Your answer is within your question. Hell indeed happened here. These innocents, 
innocents of the city who I have sworn to protect were destroyed by your hands. I couldn't do this. I'm afraid you could, and, uh, you did. You were possessed by some kind of demon. It made you do things. You do not remember? One year ago, you slaughtered those police officers and those teenagers. Wait, Vicky, Franco, those kids, I killed them all? Actually, I'm going to say nothing. It's a lot to take in, Mandana. I am aware, but we cannot coddle him. You may not want to think about it, or even remember it, but you must. The story was top news for weeks. Every district in the city was searching for you. As were we, and it is fortunate that we found you first. These people on the floor, torn apart using your bare hands. The rain washed away most of the blood from your hands, but it will always be there, whether you can see it or not. Uh, the rain washed away most of the blood from your hands, but it will always be there, whether you can see it or not. Good writing or bad writing? I present to you. Greg Ambrose, damn, you've been on a demonic rampage for a year? Christy Gaines says Bethesda could use some of these voice actors. Doc Helmet says, uh, let's watch the language, ple language, please. Say what the heck happened here. Very good, Doc Helmet. Um, this is horrible. Thank you for saving me. I should turn myself in. Uh, I'll be a decent guy. Christy Gaines, <laughs> medium writing. So that's one for medium writing. I want, I want everyone else to speak. Markin says, says bad writing. I'm going to stand by for your votes. And then I'll, we'll, we'll tally up and I'll, I'll let you guys know who won. Wrath of Truculent. It's overblown, but I think it fits the character saying it. Okay. You can give your justification, but I'm going to guess... That almost... Yeah, I can't tell if that sounds like a good writing or bad writing vote. It's binary. You have to pick one or the other. I don't know if you guys listen to the Quarter 3 Movie Podcast, but sometimes we do this there. you got to pick good writing or bad writing, and then i tell you if you won. Uh, Dr. Teflon says, I think it was okay. So far, the only person who's voted correctly, <laughs> correctly is Chris Markinson. Roth to Truculent, good writing. So Roth just says good. Markinson says bad. Just give you the line again. The rain washed most of the blood away, but you've still got some on your hands that'll never go away. No, shoot. I can't remember the specifics of the line. I'm asking you how well it was written. The rain washed most of the blood away. You still have some on your hands. It will always be there. Something like that. So far, we have one vote for good writing. Roth are checking that. One vote for bad writing. <laughs> Nathan Schubert, bad writing. JFLS, bad writing. Any other votes? We have four people. There are prizes to be won. Greg Ambrose, I mean, that's basically Lady Macbeth, more or less. Greg Ambrose, you haven't voted. Dr. Teflon, sticking with good. Stick to your guns. Don't be pressured by other people's votes. Christy Gaines, good writing. So we have two votes for good writing, four for bad. There are correct answers, by the way. Jeff Ellis, bad reading, Tom, twice. Me trying to remember the line, you mean? No, that was pretty bad. Okay, I'm still holding for votes. Uh, I do have to, real quick, read the disclaimer for legal reasons. I'm going to play good writing, good writing, bad writing. We've got to do it correctly. Okay, any other votes coming in? Oh, JFLS, bad reading and reading my first vote. Did I not get your vote correctly, JFLS? JFLS says bad writing. He's sticking with that. All right, so we have four votes for bad writing from Markinson, Nathan Schubert, JFLS, and Dr. Teflon. We have two votes for good writing from Roth to Truculent and Christy Gaines. Now, before we proceed... 
I should let you know, good writing, bad writing is not to be used in any fiduciary, financial, academic, or medical capacity. It is strictly a subjective enterprise based on the perspective of one person with an advanced degree in an unrelated field, but from an accredited institution of higher learning that happens to be Ivy League. Although the findings of good writing, bad writing are negotiable, all decisions are final, official, and binding. All right, here we go. The winners of Good Writing, Bad Writing, Roth to Truculent, Christy Gaines. You guys voted Good Writing, and I have to say, you win. You're right. It is Good Writing. Because, as Christy Gaines pointed out, in the context, and as I think someone up thread also said in the context, uh, <clears throat> the game isn't full of this kind of writing. It's allowed to get a little uh, lurid or flowery from time to time with something like that. Uh, this is a, it's a heightened action in reality. This isn't some very this isn't supposed to be some verite uh, observational slice of life thing. Uh, so in that context, I think it was good writing. It's it's going to allow itself something maybe overblown like that from time to time. Fine, it deserves it. We're standing in a room strewn with the human carnage. Uh, so uh, yeah, I say good writing. And good writing, bad writing often depends on context, and maybe you guys were just sort of like picking the line in isolation, and sometimes that's fair. But I have to say, in context, uh, I come down on good writing. So, uh, sorry, Chris Markinson, Nathan Schubert, JFLS, Dr. Teflon, we have some lovely consolation prizes for you. Uh, if you'll just step over this way, uh, we'll have the hostess see you out. Uh, while the winners, if you'll step over this way, it was a great big old fun party, and there are presents for everyone, and uh, and, and uh, huge cash awards, if you'll come over this way. <laughs> Greg Ambrose, blood, 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 and bits of sick. Greg Ambrose, that is very nice. Jeff Ellis is Tom expelling us. Now you just have to go back and sit in your seats in the audience, because you came up on stage to participate, so you got some kind of, so you get a little, like, a little uh, tin of turtle wax, and now you have to go sit in your seats with the rest of the audience <laughs> while the winners have a party over here. Uh, Matthew Holness, so uh, when Greg Ambrose cites Garth Marenghi's uh, uh, Dark Place, didn't Matthew Holness just direct a horror movie with uh, oh, Sean Harris called Possum? Am I miss... Am I, am I, is that wrong? I might be wrong about that. All right, so uh, let's get back to this. Let's see. Uh, I should turn myself out. I'm going to play the Lawful Good playthrough. That's what you always do on the first time. No, you can't do that. He is correct. Punishing yourself is not the answer and would expose us. If you want to see justice done, help make it right. Listen to me. These feelings you've got right now, the guilt, the anger, hold on to that. It means you're human. You'll need that going forward. Speaking of going... Yeah, we need to scoot. Did you put up a veil, Mondana? I did, and it will confuse the police long enough for us to get away, but we should not tarry. Um, yeah, so I was right. Uh, Matthew Holness, who plays Garth Marenghi, did a horror film. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Uh, I was super stoked to see that he did that. I mean, I can't, I don't, I can't imagine it's got the Garth Marenghi tone to it. Maybe it does. Oh, sorry, Made of Meat. Sorry, on Twitch. I'm sorry, I didn't get your votes on Twitch. My bad. Uh, made of Meat. So, Duck Helmet seems to say good writing. Made of Meat says meh writing. Uh, says the line was bad, the writing is moderately good. All yeah, so, uh, Duck Helmet, you can join us at the party here. Uh, made of Meat, sorry. Here's your uh, little tin of turtle wax, and I'm going to have to ask you to uh, return to your seat now. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So, uh, do I need to say good? Do I leave? Do I, hold on, let me just see if... Quickly, sure. leave through the back. Okay. I don't wanna... Fresh air at last. A padlock. Of course. Can you pry it off? I am tired, Eli. My strength ebbed hours ago. Perhaps he can help us. Could you find something to pry this off? Yeah, anything big or heavy should do. So obviously, like, showing the bouncer my badge, this is just teaching me inventory stuff. Uh, this pipe looks a bit corroded, but sturdy. Christy Gaines, I think there's combat here. You can't have combat in an adventure game. You've got to be kidding me. This place, much has changed. 
creature. Who are you and what is your purpose here? Purpose? You invited me. You're mistaken. I was summoned across the void by you. I say again, you are mistaken. You know I speak the truth. I know what you are, Jin Child. I know you cannot speak false. Nevertheless, a beacon appeared. A path was formed. I merely followed it. Nobody here has done such a thing. Um, that might not be <laughs> entirely true. Eli? On the roof, I used a lot of power. Probably enough to call the attention of, well, something like this. Neophyte mage, playing with forces you don't understand. I'm mage enough to burn you into a greasy smudge. You lie. I know a falsehood when I hear one. I can smell your power, mageling. You have none left. You are nearly spent. And you, Jin Child, are so fatigued you can barely stand. That may be true, but stand we shall. Since we're being so honest with each other, you don't look too healthy yourself. The journey here was long and difficult. I used much of my energy getting here. Ah, so you're just as tired as we are. That's called a stalemate, friend. I do not wish to fight. I have no <laughs> quarrel with either of you. I am merely hungry. Feed me, and I will return home. That is all? What type of food do you require? On this plane of existence, human flesh is all that will sustain me. There's a bunch behind that door. Of course it is. That's not gonna happen. Sorry. Agreed. We cannot allow that. Depart in peace. There need not be bloodshed. I need to feed. I will die otherwise. The lady asked you to leave. You give me orders? I summoned you. I do have that right. If you have the will to enforce it. Right. So, leave. <laughs> I command it. Return across the void from where you came. Uh, so, I, I, you, you guys are pointing out, it looks a little conspicuous to be just standing back here You're watching. I presume I could be doing things. But... I could see that. Mageling, you created no summoning circle, no spells of binding, no means of holding me. I guess I'm supposed to participate. Look, it here. was my first exorcism, okay? Neophyte mage, playing with forces you don't understand. I'm mage enough to burn you into a greasy smudge. You okay, lie. so it's gonna repeat until I, I know figure out what to do. Falsehood when I hear one. I can smell your power, mageling. You have none left. You are nearly spent. How do I get it over here? And you, Jin Child, are so fatigued you can barely stand. That makes no sense. That may be true, but stand we shall. Since we're being so honest with each other, you don't look too healthy yourself. Oh, I see. The journey here was long and... <laughs> I'm really good at these games. That was creatively done. Um, yeah. Nice work. Oh, uh, JFLS spoiling it, trying to tell me what to do. JFLS, don't give things away. I figured that out on my own. Uh, so I'm going to do something you guys obviously want. What the hell is this thing? Couldn't let it just kill you. Uh... 
What the hell is this thing? We cannot say for sure. This creature is from across the void. There are so many that they defy categorization. It's a ligamental. A what? Ooh. It's made up of ligaments and sinew. It fits. Very well. This creature is a ligamental. <laughs> Such agony. What matter of pain is this? I am merely oh, I couldn't let you harm anyone. I, I... That stench. It can't be. You, a demon spawn on this plane? There's a demon inside me, the but not anymore. The corruption is still thick within you. Why do you come here to torment me? There is no demon. I got rid of it. You are a fool. The corruption lingers. Creature, you are at our mercy. Return home through the void at once. You know I cannot. I used all my energy to get here. I will not survive the return journey without food. I must feed on human flesh. In this world, nothing else will sustain me. Assuming he's okay with carrion. What about the dead bodies? Is that like that? I don't care. I mean, they're dead. They won't cast it. Let's see. What? That's... Ugh. Does the demon spawn speak true? There is meat inside this building? Yes. Yes, there is. Slaughtered only hours ago. Fresh meat. That is perfect. Let me consume my fill, and I will leave you in peace. I... I do not think I can do that. It would draw too much attention. The police are bound to notice. Not to mention the victims inside are innocent. They have families, loved ones. Well, they'll want closure. They're making me feel I bad about my choice. I am innocent too, Mageling. You summoned me. I merely answered. Would you kill me just for that? It speaks true, Eli. What is your decision? How come he gets Wait, to decide? You're putting this on me? I'm the yes. player. I... I'm not the one that has to cut that thing's throat. I can't decide that for you. Yes, it is the most. Oh, I said let him feed. Practical solution. Ugh, I'm gonna be sick. Rise, creature. Eat your fill and be gone. Wait, I thought I was gonna be lawful good. Are you finished? Please, please, please be finished. Yes, I believe I can make the return journey and survive. Thanks be to you, Jin Child, Mage. Demon spawn. I shan't trouble you again. It is done. It is over. Thank God. Let's get out of here. All in all, this was eventful. Yeah, eventful. We did fine work this night. We all did. Agreed. You showed immense fortitude, especially for one in your situation. <laughs> Richard Holt isn't using every part of the buff buffalo lawful good. All right, so that's that last scene when it cut to the demon and Mandy and Eli and Tom uh, in the room full of the human carnage. It opened with the the demon, excuse me, the ligamental belching. So I guess this game isn't going to take itself entirely seriously, which fine. That's the tone they want to go for. Uh, and I also got an achievement called Burp. I'm not making that up. That actually happened. So, all right. They're not taking themselves entirely seriously. So I guess I don't have to either. Uh, I was going to play all these earnest now. Situation. So what is my situation? Can I, So can I go home now? Uh, yeah. About that. Let me. One year has passed since your possession. You were wanted by the police for many violent crimes. Yeah, I'm sorry, but your days as a cop are over. Indeed. Although you can serve in another way. The demon that infested you? That creature we just defeated? Mere taste of what is out there. And they just keep coming. We need manpower. Look, you saw us in action tonight. It's obvious we need all the help we could get. Just as it is obvious your old life is gone. But we can help. We can give you a new identity. A new life. 
a new purpose. Can I change my character? Normally, name? there's a vetting process, but you more than proved yourself tonight. So, what say you? Will you join us? I don't need to think about it. Count me in, or you guys are obviously hopeless without me. See, I never know. Like, what? What is it? There's a game. Oh shoot! I wish I could remember what it was. It was like maybe it was some JRPG or something where early on. The, the main quest giver comes to you and says, will you join me? And you know, normally you say, yeah, and then the game happens. You can actually say no and, and jump to the end of the game. And you, know, you would have to restart. I don't remember what that was, so, uh, yeah, count me in. Thank God. Some new blood at last. Uh, sorry. That sounded much less creepy in my head. We are all tired. We can find suitable sleeping arrangements back at our headquarters. They have sleeping headquarters. sounds great. By the way... My name's Eli. This is Mandana. Welcome to the Unavowed, my friend. Trust me, your life will never be the same. You guys, careful for that puddle. Don't step in it on the way out. It would be disastrous. Cozy. Frame photograph hangs above the wall near the bed. Oh. A faded old poster of a heavy metal band, Axis of Weevil. Okay, they didn't show us that. Oh. Right. Uh, there's certainly some eclectic reading matter in this bookcase. So the hand means you interact with it, I guess. The eye just describes it for you, right? Outside, you can see the hustle of downtown nightlife on the street below. Go look at it. A whole pot of espresso, just for you. Somehow it's always hot. Okay, I'm going to ask a serious question. I, I should know this. Does espresso come in pots? Oh, I see. It's one of those little uh, espresso makers, I see. I'm thinking like pot of coffee. Because I get espresso in shots. A little brass elephant with a memento of Siam written on the underside no longer known as Siam. It's Thailand these days. An empty, stained old sea chest. Just to make sure it's empty. A tiny twin bed. Small, but you slept like a rock. Alright, so I guess I'm done in here. So is she a bona fide genie, then? If she can do that. Sharp little knives dot the surface of this target. This training dummy is covered with deep scratches. Mandana moves with practiced precision. Not a drop of sweat on her. This helmet's been buffed to a gleaming shine. Oh, I can actually interact with it. Can I take it and wear it? That helmet is cursed. Oh. Any warrior who dons it would find their head squeezed until it breaks. <laughs> they would be wary of touching it. Freaky. This bottle looks incredibly ancient and is engraved with indecipherable characters. Do not even consider it. Christine, that's not a katana. <laughs> Someone said of a Fred that that is a scimitar. Katana, please. Wait, what did you say about that? Do not even consider it. Oh, okay, well. Uh, what else do we got over here? Vicious looking weapons decorate the wall. Please do not disturb those. It took centuries to arrange them just the way I like them. So she is a genie, then. If she, can, if she has centuries to burn vicious looking weather, okay. Alright, I guess I just need to talk to her. You are awake. Did you sleep well? Wow, you... You just came out of a bottle. This astonishes you. After all you experienced. She is a genie. I suppose I should have seen this coming. Introduction to the supernatural world can often have unpredictable effects on the mundane mind. It may take some time for you to process it all. Uh, who are you calling mundane? Smartass playthrough. That's me, Mr. Unpredictable. Also, the smartass playthrough. You came out of a bottle, and I'm not freaking out. I'm processing it okay. I believe you might be right. Especially if last night is any indication. I think you are going to make this transition just fine. And this is good, because there is so little time to waste. My father, Kalash, is waiting to speak to you in the room beyond the red drapes. 
When you are ready, seek him out. In the meantime, relax and explore the facility. I will be here if you have any questions. Kalash. So the the ligamental called her Jin Child. So does that mean Kalash is a bona fide Jin? Uh, these old stone steps are black with. Is that soot? Well, let's go in here first. Talk to Kalash. Yeah, it looks like a genie. Uh, the spirits in these bottles are the drinking kind. At least you hope. A blue-green crystal glowing with a mysterious inner light. An ornate lamp glowing gently. A colorful painting of a mother and child. So is that Mandala's mother? What was her name? Mandala? No. Mandana. Smoke dances up the chimney from the warm embers of the fire. This bottle emits a faint hum. Alright, let's talk to an impossibly old, impossibly muscled, and impossibly blue man gazes into the fire. Mm hmm. Oh, you're the new one, aren't you? <laughs> sure told. Yeah, it was a gin child, or possibly a scotch child. Please. Uh, it's funny when you write it D-G-I-N-N -N, and people try to pronounce the D. I say people. A friend of mine would s swore that, they, no, it's called, that's Dijin. Dijin. <laughs> it's Dijin. Uh, it was either this or get arrested. Yes, I'm here to join the unavowed. You're blue. I don't want to do the smart-ass playthroughs. Just stop offering me these games because I'm not going to pick them. Yes, I'm here to join the unavowed. Nobody joins the unavowed, oh. boy. We serve it. We are the wall against the darkness. As for me, I am Kalash. I am a jinn of the ancient kingdom, and I run this branch of the unavowed. And you? You were possessed. How would you let that happen? Greg Ambrose says uh, he thought the word falchion was actually falchion. <laughs> Pronounced that way. I can see why, that, why someone would think that. I never did, but... Uh, I didn't exactly let it happen. Uh, it was a book. I touched it, and then... Sloppy. Sloppy. Such a thing would have been unthinkable once. In my day, even a newborn babe had wits enough to leave books of demonic evil alone. <laughs> Mundanes today don't know they're born. The world has gotten soft. Needs toughening up. How tough are you, new boy? Uh, I'm a cop. I'm trained to put my life on the line if I have to. I stopped that monster in the alley. It's not a facet of being tough, though. That was just me knowing adventure game puzzles. Uh, I got hit by lightning yesterday several times. Okay. Uh, I'm a cop. I'm trained to put my life on the I've line if I have to. I've read your service record. Adequate, but not exemplary. No, no. You have yet to experience your true crucible, but it will come. Oh, yes. It will come. At any rate, we have much to discuss and much to do. Settle in. Talk to the others. Get the lay of the land. I will call our meeting when you are ready. So these guys are like the X-Men. Uh, this imposing door leads down to the street. I don't want to leave yet. Ooh, a ship in a bottle hangs in a place of honor above the door. Ships in a bottle are cool. It's even cooler than that. It's a pirate ship in a bottle. What is that humming jar? Okay, I can't interact with it, I guess. Alright, so uh, let's go down this sooty passageway. Um, we'll let her practice. Come back later and talk to her. Some precisely calculated fireball trajectories. An old wedding photo. Man, is that Eli? I suppose so. Is he gonna have a tragic backstory? Poor guy. Beckett? So his name is Eli Beckett. An old color photo of Eli and Mondana. <laughs> Feeding the pigeons in the park. They look like an old couple. Wait, are they a couple? Are they together? Fire extinguisher is a nice touch. 
black and white photo of two young girls. So I'm guessing he lost his wife and daughters to demons. That's just my guess. Now, there's nothing wrong with being predictable or cliches. It's just when they're poorly done. So the fact that I'm guessing that, if I'm right, doesn't mean I like the game less necessarily. A scrolled list of obscure formulas. It's all Greek to you. Now, if you're a stickler, which I'm not, because we speak English here, not Greek or Latin, it would be formulae. Oh, black one photo of a man at a desk. Yeah, that's Eli, right? Because there's his hat and his, uh, his overcoat, trench coat. All right, let's talk to, oh, more fire extinguishers. <laughs> I just noticed those. Oh, and he sleeps down here, this is his room. All right, let's talk to Eli. Hey, don't surprise a fire mage like that. <laughs> Bad idea. Anyway, hi, you settling in okay? Uh, C. Floyd Deck 9 says, I'm just joining, what occupation did you pick? Uh, I'm afraid C. Floyd Deck 9, if, if you were looking for Lovecraft's untold tales, I was having issues with it not reading my controller correctly and getting me killed. So I uh, I exited out in Rage Uninstalled. And in the meantime, some folks in the YouTube chat, specifically a fellow named Roth Detruculent, were uh, talking about this game unavowed. So I was like, fine, I'm going to go install that and play that instead. So C. Floyd Deck 9. Oh, but actually, maybe you are asking about this game. I. What occupation did you pick? Can you choose occupations? Because when I was asked earlier, I said I was a cop. Because I guess you could be actor. Oh, I forgot what the other one was. So I chose cop. Those are all legitimate answers then? Like, I, there are different starting con Wait a minute. Those are like different, whole different stories. Greg Ambrose, so this guy is John Constantine, I guess. Uh, Chris Markinson, it's April 16th, 25th, a good time to come visit. Anybody come to LA, come to LA, play board games with me. Markinson or whomever. If you're ever in LA, I demand that you come over. Roth the Truckin' says, yes. C. Floyd Deck 9. Yeah, actor, bartender. That was the other one. Or a cop, I guess. They seem like they would all be dramatically different. Richard Holt, you get a different prologue for each background. Ah. Richard Holt, how do you know about this? You don't seem like you'd play this kind of game. Jeez, Markinson, that is the trivia. Tom used the name Eli for the name of the narrator's son in Shoe Club. Why would you remember that? Wow. Uh, C. Floyd Deck 9. Hope you don't mind me saying so, Tom, but while I was playing this, I thought Eli looked like you. Awesome! Sweet. Man, I wish. Um, alright, so this place is kind of weird. This place is pretty cool. You're throwing fire. You noticed. It's kind of the elephant in the room. Yeah, I like to do this in my spare time. Keeps me sharp. But seriously, it took me a while to get used to this stuff. It's not gonna happen for you overnight. But you'll get there. Faster than you think. Anyway. I'm sure you want to walk around. I'll be here if you have any questions. Could I ask you a few questions first? Thanks, Eli. I don't see why not. Can we talk about the unavowed? I'm curious about yourself. That can't be correct, right? Wouldn't it just be I'm curious about you? This has always tripped me up. Is using like yourself, myself, himself. About last night. I believe that's a David Mamet play. Could I ask you about some of the pictures on your walls? A photo appeared on my wall. Do you know how it got there? I'll leave you to it. All right, let's see if I was right. Look, I really wanted to get some practice in. Maybe next time. Greg Ambus, yeah, you could use that photo yourself in CGM with a loosely tied tie. This guy does look at it. All right, I'll, I'll take that, sure. Um, so he's being coy about his pictures. I'm guessing I'm still right. Uh, photo pair on my wall. Do you know how it got there? Huh, you too, huh? Wasn't long after I joined up that my first photo appeared. Scared the hell out of me. It's something to do with this building. It wants you to remember who you are, who you were. Don't think about it too hard. I've been here 50 years and I still don't know how it works. Wow, that's kind of cool. I know a little bit about that. What do you want to know? What does the unavowed do? Well, we're sort of supernatural police. I guess you can relate to that, being a cop and all. Sometimes there's a threat that only we can handle, and we go and handle it. Well, I say sometimes, but lately it's been a lot more than that. So he, he just now said, I guess you would know about that, being a cop and all. So I guess if you pick bartender or actor, they insert 
different lines into the dialogue referencing it. That's that's a lot of work. Uh, how long has the Unavowed been around? Gosh, a really long time. Sorry. If you're looking for a history lesson, Mandana or Kalash are the ones to ask. As far as I'm concerned, we do good work. That's all that matters. How come I've never heard of you guys before? You know, I wondered the same thing when I first joined. I mean, we're careful. We use veils. I don't throw fire around Times Square or anything. But the real secret, nobody notices us. It's kind of uncanny. Mundanes go through crazy mental tricks to pretend we're not there. So maybe the mundane world isn't ready for us yet, but they will be. They won't have a choice the way things are going. Richard Holt says, um, I l okay, okay, but wait, it says, uh, Richard Holt says he got bogged down playing this. Um, the first game he bought, Richard Holt says, was Curse of Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge. Ever since then, he's had a soft spot for adventure games. If, if there are going to be many more puzzles like that, uh, Go through the trash, find copper wire and a cloth. Did the cloth even do it? Oh yeah, the cloth stopped up the drain. Um, that stuff, I just, I, I have no interest in. If it's gonna do much of that, I'm not gonna get very far. Uh, more threats, how much is a lot more? Oh, what was that a reference to? Wolf. Let me put it this way. There are 732% more threats than there used to be, give or take 0.5. A year ago, we'd usually be called out once a month, if at all. Now it's almost every day, and me and Mandana, we're the only ones dealing with it. Until now, anyway. Sure. I'm curious about I you. guess if we're gonna work together, we should know each other. Ask away. How long have you been with the Unavowed? Since the Nixon administration. <laughs> I'm, uh, older than I look. So how old if are you? you must know, I'm 92. It's the magic. Keeps me young. No surgery required. I love that bit in the extended edition of the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies where Viggo Mortensen ex says how old he is. Because he's part, what are they, Numenorian? Like humans that were super good. Uh, and he says something like, I'm, I'm, I'm 112. Or, I love that little bit. You're 92, really? Yeah, it, it is what it is, okay? I'm a mage. We live long lives. And a story. Well, Mondana said it took her hundreds of years to get those weapons right, so... This guy's like a spring chicken compared to her. So do you live down here? Why do you think? Fire mage here. I could easily burn this place to the ground if I'm not careful. I needed a place to practice, and a room insulated with stone was the obvious choice. Besides, I don't feel the cold, so it's quite cozy down here. Look at you guys, Richard Hall and Christy Gaines, both pretty much simultaneously pointing out that uh, he says that to Eowyn. It's Liv Tyler's character, right? Couple of uh, Tolkien nerds, or are you Peter Jackson nerds? I guess you could be both. So you're a wizard. That just, uh, seems really, well, I better click this. Never use the word wizard. It's a social <laughs> faux pas or something. I'm a mage. With a capital M. Oh! The capital is also important. At least that's what the books tell me. I never actually met another mage to find out. Miranda Otto. Good lord, yeah, Eowyn. So, Eomer's sister. Carl Urban. Christy Gaines, that's a great scene. Man, how could I... Yeah, Liv Tyler, she can't hold the candle to Mar Miranda Otto as far as I'm concerned. Doesn't that fire hurt? Nope. Kind of tingles, but that's it. It's kind of like playing with light, at least when it touches my flesh. Clothes, though, I can burn them clear off and I won't even notice. Took about a decade and a dozen indecent exposure arrests <laughs> before I managed to make my clothes fireproof. Uh, let's talk about someone else. Sure. Uh, about last You night. have time to process it? I know I have. To be honest, I'm just glad the exorcism worked. It took four days of concentration to prepare that spell. I gave it everything I had. Well, yeah. When you deal with demons, you don't leave anything to chance. Not to mention lightning. If I hadn't prepared, it could have fried you. Not to mention me. I just wish I hadn't summoned that... thing. I know the creature was technically blameless, but I'm still not sure we made the right call. Still, I suppose it's too late now. 
Richard says he's a Tolkien nerd, and he has a soft spot for those three movies. Because a lot of Tolkien nerds are like, eh, Two Towers, eh, I don't like it. Eh, Return of the King did something I don't like. Eh. I feel sorry for Tolkien nerds who couldn't enjoy the Lord of the Ring movies. I actually, when those were theatrical, theatrically released, I could not have cared less about them. I so checked out in the middle of the first one. And it wasn't until years later, watching the extended edition, that I was like, whoa, these are kind of cool. C. Floyd Deck 9, sorry to interrupt for Twitch troubleshooting. Does anyone know why I'm not seeing most of the chat messages? So C. Floyd Deck 9, there actually aren't that many on Twitch. Oh, oh, I see, C. Floyd Deck 9, yeah. There's, I'm also streaming on YouTube. So I'm reading both the YouTube and the Twitch comments. So if you're on one or the other, you might think, wait, I didn't see that chat message. Uh, I have the benefit of omniscience, also known as having two windows open in a browser. <laughs> Doug Helmet dipped out to read a comic book, nerd. Uh, I already did this one, right? You had time to, to be. I just, I know. Stiff. All right. Could I ask you about some of the pictures on your walls? I already asked. Okay, we right. to it. See you around. All right. So now we go back up and uh, talk to Ka Kalash. What was his name? Duck Helmet, I'm working on a Gandalf drawing. I'm certain to unimpress Tolkien nerds. Uh, oh, we want to talk to her on the way up again, now that we've talked to her dad. Yes. Can we talk about the Unavowed? Certainly. What is your question? What do they do? So I know these. Well, I want to hear this voice actress. We are peacekeepers. We protect the mundane world from the threats of the supernatural. We help who we can destroy ones we must and recruit those who are willing with you i suppose we did all three uh i was talking to my friend christian about this yesterday what was it in reference to oh he tried to watch the pavel Pav pavelowski so I'm, am i butchering that guy's last name uh cold war which is nominated for an academy award this year uh and he was talking about how when you watch a movie with subtitles you have to give it your undivided attention. You can't, like, watch it in a window while you're doing something else in another window. Uh, and I pointed out to him that, oddly enough, and I don't get this because I think it interrupts the flow and the tone of what's going on, video games by default will put subtitles up over cutscenes. So it forces you, doesn't force you, but you are reading something while the voice actor is saying it. Which I think is always weird to have those two different layers going. Pick one or the other. If you're going to hire a voice actor, let the voice actor's performance carry the words and not a simultaneous reading by the, the, the viewer. Movies don't do that. But every video game, not every, but so many video games do that. Is they just run subtitles underneath the dialogue, even during a cutscene. So here, you know, these voice actors are doing fine. I don't, and I'm... You know, I'm reading subtitles as I'm hearing it, and that's just weird to me. That's just not how you process narrative. It, it's not how I do it, so. All right, let's see. Uh, how long has it been around? Okay. As a whole, for thousands of years. But the New York branch is only 400 <laughs> years old. As long as there is need of us, we will be here. We do not exactly advertise our presence. We prefer it that way. But the truth is, the last century has seen a diminishing need for our services. Things have certainly changed. Chris Floyd, there is something to that, but I find with games, I often miss what's being said. And in a game, a line with a hint or tutorial can be devastating to miss. I always play with subtitles on. Chris Floyd, how much of that is because... Because does that, does that happen with movies, Chris Floyd? When you're watching a movie, you miss a line? I, I think in a, in a way we're conditioned by games because they're subtitles to not pay as close attention because there are two levels that the information and cutscene is being com communicated to us is the voice actor and the reading so we can sort of be lazy with how we participate or how we watch a, a cutscene you, you might just be talking about something different because you're trying to do gameplay while there's a tutorial and that's fine yeah but i mean like during cutscenes and whatnot um, and jfls points out the sound mix is often bad in games so the subtitles are often necessary that, that again, JFLS, just gets to what I'm talking about. If, if you're going to have a voice actor, get your sound mix right. 
It's a fundamental part of movie making. Why can't it be for the, the cutscenes in video games? But yeah, you guys are both right. So Chris Floyd, yeah, when you have dialogue while you're trying to do something else, especially a tutorial. And GFLS, yeah, the sound mixes can totally scuttle that. So it has to lean on the subtitles. Greg Ambrose, well, for me at least, I tend to play games late at night when the family's asleep, so I often crank down the sound and rely on subtitles. And that's another thing too, Greg Ambrose, is I, I fully support being able to, to turn subtitles on for situations like that. But the default in video games is there's a subtitle. But yeah, absolutely, I, I, I definitely get that. And subtitles are great, by the way, for hearing impaired folks. Like, you know, I'm sure, I don't know, what, 20 years ago, uh, hearing impaired folks just couldn't enjoy movies the way they can now. Chris Floyd, true, it's not uncommon for me to miss a line in a movie, and I just carry on, carry on unless it seems super important. I'm trying to think how I feel about that. Sometimes when I'm at home and I'm watching a movie, like like on Amazon Prime or something, or yeah, DVD, like, and I can't quite hear a line. I'll I'll back up, and oftentimes it's because of someone's accent. Like those English. Why can't they just speak English like Americans, like normal people do, like actual English? And the Irish. Oh, that's another thing is watching <laughs> watching very Irish movies. Yeah, I might have to turn on the subtitles. There's a really cool movie called Seventy One. Directed by Jan de uh, with Jack O'Connell, which I remember, I, I liked it a lot, but I eventually was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to rewatch this with subtitles on to just get what everyone is saying. Ugh, those Irish. Doug Helmet, I always turn off subtitles, but it's such a habit, I don't think of it as weird. I agree. Why does it default to on, right? Okay, uh, ch uh, oh shoot, I forgot what the context was for changed. What did you. Yes, supernatural threats ah. have been escalating. It happened so suddenly, we were caught unprepared. Oh, hi, Cat. We had become complacent. We have not been recruiting. You are the first new recruit in decades. The first of many, we hope. Uh, I'd like to ask I something. will do my best to answer. Oh, we'll come over here. Fine. All right. All right. There's now a cat fully participating in this live stream. Uh, can you tell me about Eli? Now, is this where we're going to get his backstory about his wife and daughters being killed by demons? Eli is my partner and a dear, dear friend. We have saved each other's lives more often than we can count. You and he have much in common. He was once mundane, like yourself. I would recommend asking him about his transition. It might help with your own. Oh, JFLS, I basically learned English by watching The Simpsons with subtitles. <laughs> Exhaust all of these? What do you want to know? No, I didn't. The term is Jin. And yes, on my father's side. And no, I do <laughs> not grant wishes. When was this city founded? 1624. Yes, I was just a child, but it was around that time. Duck Helmet, secretly, I like this game. Christy Gaines up, up thread said she also likes it. You're 400 years old? 418. No, 19. <laughs> My birthday was last month. It is difficult to keep track, but Father always remembers. I will do my best to answer. I do not know. I am not being facetious. I honestly do not know. This building has housed many agents over the centuries, and they too have been given gifts. Photographs and portraits of loved ones, precious possessions long since lost we do not question it we merely accept it and be thankful for it Richard Holt for request Wednesday uh, says he was thinking of giving me a chance to dig into battle tech which I haven't done in quite some time Richard Holt if I were grading request Wednesday requests that one would get on a scale of five exclamation points that one would get three four exclamation points yeah you know, it's no Guild Wars 2 or, or Endless Space 2 request. But it's up there. Last night, yes, you gave us quite the chase. We know nothing about the demon that was inside you, but it was a wily thing. Be grateful that you cannot. It was taunting us, dancing just out of our reach, slaughtering whomever it could. But we got it in the end. Regardless of what happens next, 
We stopped it. We can all take comfort in that. I love her eyes, the way they draw her eyes. I'll, here, I'll do this again so you can see the picture. Last night. Yeah. Yes. You gave us quite the change. We know it, but we, we can all... That's another thing, too, with subtitles, is I will find myself, because the subtitles are there, and I'm impatient. I'll just do this. Last night. Because I can read it. The, it was... But we got it in the end. We can all take comfort in... Faster than she can say it. Doug Helmet says, uh, you're welcome for my request of Call of Cthulhu. Doug Helmet, I didn't say thank you. <laughs> but you know, I'm happy to play it. I'm happy to load up my saved game and look around the limited area for a wench handle. It'll be super exciting. <laughs> Actually, for something like that, just because I really am at a bottleneck, I would probably just look up, where's the damn winch handle, to get past it and see what's past there. Maybe I did get past that part already. I honestly don't remember. Thank you. All right, let's go talk to Cal Kalash again. Just gonna go back up in my room. No. Let's go talk to Kalash again, and then I'm gonna uh, save and call it a night. Cat, are you leaving? Are you staying here? Hmm. What is it? You ready to start the meeting? I might know a thing or two about that. We're the wall against the darkness, the protectors of the mundane world. We might not be what we once were, but we are here, and that is nope. all that matters. Dude, your claws are god. Here, do you need to leave? All right, hold on, cat management. No, you're just getting comfortable. Cat was fussy. Uh, how long has the Unified been around? Nobody knows for sure. Not even I. But this branch is exactly 393 years old. I know because I founded it. Here, listen to this. Listen. It's me spanking the cat's butt. It's awful fun to do when you got a cat. Just light little spanks on their butt. <laughs> it's tormenting them. Alright, hold on. I have to let the cat... Uh... Alright, goodbye. That was his judgment on the game. Is no longer interested. I'm leaving. Let me out. <laughs> That's gratitude for you. Used to be. You mundanes would beg us for help if a cat looked at you funny. But yes, <laughs> I, mean... I won't deny it. Supernatural threats became fewer and further between over the last century. There was little reason for mundanes to think of us at all. But things have changed. Another vote for Battletech. Yes, this city was becoming a force to be reckoned with, with the supernatural forces to match. There was important work to be done. I volunteered, and here I am still. You know what I wonder if it holds up? The Indiana Jones adventure game with the, the red-headed chick. Is her name Sophie? Why would I remember that? That can't hold up. Because that's from a time when the puzzles were just super uh, just annoying and counterintuitive and obscure, right? That can't be any good. Fate of Atlantis. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Exactly. Wow, even just saying the name makes me think, yeah, that, I want to go back to that. Because you get on like a submarine? Or I, and her name was Sophie, right? No, maybe not. Yes. Supernatural threats have risen. Exponentially. It's been difficult to contain. We need to fill our ranks. You are the first in a long line of many, I hope. Well, spit it out. I do not indulge in idle gossip. If you want to know of someone, ask them. Dr. Jones, yeah, Sophia. Okay, yeah, so it's close. So I get half a point at least. Duck Helmet, nothing holds up. Move on with your life. <laughs> Not now. My opinion will be given during the meeting, rest assured. All right, let's have a meeting, then I'm going to call it a night, and we'll all go and have our weekends. Here we go. Indeed. The time for waiting is past. <clears throat> Father, you met our latest recruit? Yes. I admit he doesn't look like much, 
But we'll see what this life makes of him. We were all neophytes once, Kalash. Most of us, Mage Beckett. Most of us. I have read the reports on your last mission. Mage Beckett, is it true you summoned a void creature? Yes, by accident, I swear. Irrelevant. Magic is unpredictable. I understand this. What I don't understand is why you let it feed on human corpses. <laughs> what will the mundane authorities think when they find tooth marks on the victims? Hmm? The creature was both a danger and an innocent. We reached a compromise. That is all. We'll be the ones compromised if the two of you aren't more careful. So Chris Floyd says this game's worth sticking with. It does some innovative, innovative stuff with branching. The puzzles aren't too hard, and the story goes through some pretty cool twists. Um, don't blame them, it was my idea, because I'm doing the, the mandatory lawful good playthrough the first time you play a game. That may be, but you had no authority over them. It was their choice to make. Father, regardless of our choices, the Void Creature is gone. We have a more pressing concern. Yes, you let the demon escape. Your mission was a failure. Well, if nobody's gonna speak up, I will. It was my fault. I was so close. I had it contained, but it was stronger than I expected. I see. This is becoming distressingly commonplace. Nevertheless, Eli speaks the truth. We underestimated the threat. Then that will have to be sufficient. And now to the next item at hand. Your next mission. Richard Holt isn't it the neutral good option. Well, I don't want to do anything chaotic, that's for sure. First, do no evil. Second, do no chaos. That's the credo of the first time game player. Alright, my first mission. So soon, Ellie's get. So yeah, two smart-ass things. Oh, maybe that's not smart. That could be earnest, actually. But I'm just gonna keep quiet. I'm... Until I'm called on. You don't say much, do you? Oh, well, yeah. Well, that needs to change. Starting right now. Oops. I have detected void activity in the East Village. Somewhere close to Aster Place. You are to travel there. Determine the cause of the disturbance. And neutralize it. Uh, I know what neutralize means. What's void activity? Activity from beyond the void. Do try and keep up. Well, are you oh, sure he's ready to go out into the field so soon? These are dangerous times. Dark forces are coming. We don't have the time for traditional training. If he isn't able to handle it immediately, we might as well kill him now. Trial by fire. Sink or swim. Do or die. You want to prove yourself to the unavowed new boy? Now is your chance. Meeting adjourned. Yikes. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that settles that. Uh, I actually do want to know what trial by fire is. I know, right? If anyone's going to do a fire oh. pun, it should be me. Figure it Anyway, did. we're ready when you are. Sweet. Um, so actually, what happens if... Do you come up here? Ah, yeah, here we go. I fail to see how I can be of use there. Ah, so they're like inventory items. You send them places. I fail to see. All right. Uh, and this is, yeah, I guess just to scroll around to get more stuff. All right. Save game. Do you, do you guys have like a, a general save game naming convention? Because here's my first playthrough, then dash, and my first save in my first playthrough. Especially for like strategy games, like Endless Space 2, when you might have multiple games going. You know, the third game I've played, there's the first save, and then there'd be the second save. So, this is 1 1. Alright, uh, thank you for watching the live stream for Lovecraft's Untold Stories. Uh, I mean, Unavowed. We called an audible until Lovecraft's Untold Stories can be bothered to have working game controller support. I'm uninterested in playing it, and the story shall remain untold. <laughs> A few of us made that joke. 
Uh, everyone have a great weekend. Come on back on Monday and we'll be live streaming. You know what? Maybe more of this. Who knows? And after about an hour, we'll do a drawing for request Wednesday and then find out what we're live streaming on Wednesday. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy your weekends. See you on Monday. Cheers. Wait. Oh, that, that timing is so terrible. Here we go. Pretend I did it like this. Thanks. Enjoy your weekends. See you on Monday. Cheers. A little better. Again, I'm still working on it, but what do you say? You want me to be honest? Totally, of course. I mean, it's just the two of us. That song is shit in a can. What? I thought it was just awful. I disagree. This song is a huge hit. A hit? No way, Ruff. Trust me. I know this business. That song sucks. Not even a tampon ad would want to use that song. You have ads for tampons that are very good.